Lowering the cost of prescription drugs has been a hotly debated topic for years, and it's certainly not going away anytime soon. I want to bring in Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani now, because Anjali, I know that you got to speak with Cygnus CEO David Cordani to discuss how his company is thinking about drug pricing going forward. That's right, Alexis. And we know that, of course, Cigna absorbed Express Scripts and has really built out a, a multiple different sort of avenues to be able to innovate and look at many of these topics that we know are pressuring the healthcare systems um, and the healthcare industry today. And specifically talking about PBMs, uh, as part of the JPM uh, annual healthcare conference, uh, David mentioned during his presentation that the idea of PBMs or pharmacy benefit managers, which we know have been sort of blamed as being middlemen in drug pricing and possibly being responsible for some of the rises, uh, he defended them saying that the basically the way that PBMs existed before are yesterday's PBMs, in quotes. Um, and we talked about that uh, and a little bit more. Just listen. Uh, I believe very passionately that um, pharmacy benefit managers and the legacy of those have created a lot of value from a societal standpoint. Access to care, care coordination programs, the movement from brand to generic was led by the, the PBMs long before um, Signet Express Scripts came together. So a lot of value creation. Two is we have to look at any business, whether it's the traditional medical business portfolio or the traditional pharmacy business portfolio, the change in innovation is ever present. So what I meant by my comment, if you think about a traditional definition of what a PBM does, most people view that a PBM would work with the manufacturers to contract for access to certain services sell those services, and then have some economics in between uh, that correlate. So supply chain management and kind of access to care. Today, in the marketplace we operate in, um, we've moved in a three-year period of time to far less than 50% of all of our relationships, having full transparency um, funding mechanisms, to well greater than 75%. And in the case of rebates, well over 90%. So that's the definition of yesterday versus the future, because what it comes down to is, how do you use pharmacy services to help to maintain or improve the quality of life for an individual? And we exist in a society where more and more each and every day, pharmaceuticals are becoming a larger part of the overall care equation. And lastly, ending with a concrete example, the fastest growing part of our Evernorth service portfolio is within the specialty pharmacy capabilities through our credo capabilities. In some cases, these drugs are single source unique drugs that the coordination with the medical professional, the patient, and then the care team around them is mission critical. And one of our accredo nurses is invited into the home of that patient to facilitate the infusion and the care coordination plan. So that's an example of the change that manifests itself over time. And at the end of the end of the day, we see the pharmacy services as an important complement to medical services and behavioral services, that when you design the right solutions for an employer, a health plan or a governmental agency, you're giving better value to them and importantly to their patients by coordinating the service around that. That's what we mean by yesterday versus today and tomorrow where the model is going. Speaking of yesterday versus today, pharmacy or pharmaceuticals in general are also looking uh, to the future. And we've seen a lot of pretty interesting things happen. I'm sure you saw the headline of a modified pig's heart. And we're looking at genetics and gene therapy, gene genetic treatments, as well as, of course, the, the surge in interest in mRNA. All of this, while great, also proves to be a specific uh, hike for you in terms of coverage. It's going to be more expensive because it's new and, and has a lot more growth to go through. How do you see that play into drug pricing policy and conversation? So when you think about the, your, your wonderful question, we've touched upon two and now the third major part of change we see in the marketplace. So changing access to care, harnessing technology is one two, the mental and physical health coordination of services, and three, pharmacological innovation is what you articulate. We will see more and more specialty drugs, gene therapies, personalized medicines, and unique interventions as we go forward from a societal standpoint. That's good because in many cases, they are curative. In some cases, they are life transforming. Um, in some cases, they are life-saving, yet they're extremely expensive. And the question comes down to, how do you amass the portfolio of services to be able to get and optimize the outcome for the patient, because this is where precision takes place. The data to get the precise matching to the individual and then the care coordination plan around the individual with the medical um, professional and the pharmaceutical professional. That, that's what we're positioned to do. 
And taking a concrete example, um, as you know, the biosimilar adoption in the United States lags all the other OECD countries in the world, yet we're on the precipice of an acceleration in 2023, 2024, 2025 with more biosimilars. Our organization is positioned to thrive in that environment, to be able to provide more services. And when you think about the cost defraiment that comes from smart use of biosimilars, it creates more finance capacity for what you just talked through. Societally, we need to create the capacity. This is not a message of um, legislating a price point or limiting access. It's driving innovation. And we see biosimilars as a wonderful example where hundreds of billions of dollars of savings, $275 billion societally, um, are able to be pulled out of the spending equation if we're using biosimilars at the same rate as other OECD countries. So um, yes, uh, an affordability challenge, innovation is required to be able to harness that, and then more um, spending capacity, specifically through the aggressive adoption and smart utilization of biosimilars, we think is mission critical, and we've positioned our company to be at the forefront of that. So as you can hear, a lot really thought needed to go into how we're developing, especially newer, more expensive drugs and different types of drugs these days. Back to you. And then Anjali, I want to just get your uh, reaction. What were some of the other key takeaways from the JPM healthcare conference? Well, Corinne, I would actually say that uh, this year is kind of quiet, and that's been sort of the observation from many of the longtime attendees and, and experts uh, saying that while you know there were there were a flurry of deals um, and M and A, there wasn't anything really like a blockbuster or sort of highlighting uh, you know what is going on in, in the industry. There's a lot of focus on gene therapy, of course, um, as well as just generally the idea of newer technologies, like you heard, like you heard uh, David. Cordani talk about. So I think that's really been the key takeaway. It's been kind of a quiet year. Even before uh, having to cancel and go virtual, there were already people discussing the idea of not attending. Uh, so it's been interesting to see how this year has panned out and whether or not that sentiment continues into next year. All right. Great stuff. Thanks for bringing us that uh, interview with the Cygnus CEO, Anjali Kamlani.